And what's up, everybody? <gasps> it's your boy Ooch, and I'm here with my brother Ooch, and we are back again. Once again, how y'all doing today? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back for another banger episode of the Full Power Podcast. And like I said in the intro, I ain't alone, and it's been consistent. I hope you guys have been enjoying these. What's going on, my man, brother Ush? How you doing today, sir? Doing all right, doing all right. Chilling, vibing. Yep. Solid. <laughs> so, so this week's episode, guys, not gonna lie, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you guys. Ain't really much going on in the in the realm of Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball in general. There has not been any news as far as the new movie that's coming out next year, even though we're pretty much, by the time this comes out, we are in the last month of 2021. So to be honest, because of this entire, you know, pandemic era that we're been, it just, it realistically kind of just feels like one long ass year. It doesn't even feel like a new year. It kind of just, it's just rollover, right? And I feel like it's going to be the same thing with 2022 because I don't know if you're aware, but uh, apparently there's like a new variant now of this freaking virus. So a lot of the foreign countries, they already were like, oh yeah, no. Nah. Like they, they shut their fucking, <laughs> they, they shut their doors down. Like no one can travel unless you have like a, like a, like a visa or you're like a resident there or you have dual citizenship there. Like they're not fucking around with that no more. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a thing. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, I, I figured I would actually pull some comments from the last uh, reaction that I did for the chapter 78. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess there's, there's a little, I mean, not really much to talk about as far as the uh, Dragon Ball Breakers, which was a pretty heavy uh, topic discussion that we had last week. And outside of that, I mean... I mean, we could start, I could start by saying this. Your boy, Brother Ooch, has been playing Halo with the family. And let me tell you, as a team, like, we still got, we still, I'm not gonna lie, we, just, we still got some ways, a ways to go, you know, to be a one cohesive unit. But I'm not gonna lie, Brandon, this shit has, I've had, this has been the most comped out Halo experience I've probably ever had. And this is, this, this goes on top of when i used to do lands in person like i i don't know if you remember i used to go to freaking jamil's house freaking uh what the hell was his gamer tag i totally forget his freaking <laughs> gamer tag it was like sick doc some shit like that i don't even fucking remember but i used to go to his house and we'd have doc in there snyder man it would literally be the four of us I bring my 360 with, with my view sonic monitor and <laughs> I we, we would all hook up in his basement land land that shit up and we would be playing as a team did it like a couple times and like and then obviously like we used to do it with our cousins and stuff I'm telling you right now the way we've been playing me you little ooch papa ooch it's a spectacle Especially when we're when we're on fire, like yo, last night we was playing, bruh. I know it's not I know it's not perfect to your liking, but I'm telling you, it's, we as long as we keep this shit up, man, and we make those little bits of adjustments and improvements, dude. Whew, listen, I'm, I would I would I would I would dare suggest <laughs> that we enter some fucking tournaments together. All right. That would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that'll be fun. Hell yeah, that shit would be funny. That would be funny and fun. I'll tell you that right now because who would have ever thought? And the funny thing is, and I hope Dad is listening to this episode because let me tell you something, man. I, I can see where I get my um my self doubt genes from because this man, this man be shitting on himself for no reason. He's like, ah oh, man, you guys be doing so so much better if I wasn't playing. Or, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm my shot. I no fucking shot. <laughs> like, like you know, like, and I'm just like, Dad, no, like, can't can't be like this because, real re realistically, right? Like, all of us has something to improve upon. Doesn't like no one, no one on on our team is perfect. 
like you're you're probably our best guy clearly you're, you are the v shooter in the family but when we're all together and we're we're on the same fucking wavelengths dude like like i'm telling you you go back and you watch those first few games that we played when we when we when we linked up yesterday dude like i had people in the chat that were like impressed <laughs> like they were they were like they were like yo this is godlike like these call outs like i'm telling you like we were on fire like this is the type of shit that i want people to freaking really pay attention to especially when i'm streaming halo with you guys because it's been it's been a lot of fun and the vibes that i'm getting from it are just od like i'm telling you better than when i actually used to land in person with high school friends and with our cousins back in the day because when freaking on and danny they would come over and this man would take my freaking tv yeah, and then i would have my small john <laughs> then then danny would be in like your room you know or however way we fucking set it up or like when i when we would go over there like like those were definitely lots of fun but like it, it teaming with you guys playing with you guys has been so sick and i we we have to keep this up because this is this is this is uh this is all i've ever asked or wanted out of out of uh of this new halo game coming out because if it, it, it i know it's good when you have consistently shown interest to the point where this man got a christmas present early he got a brand new elite series 2 controller just so he could really get with the shits you know what i'm saying hmm. so see what happens with it see if i improve i don't know the only thing i mean because halo is a completely different game from god so like mm -hmm. from what i've learned just from the little that i've watched from the pro circuits at the moment and everything like obviously playing your life in this game is as as more like it's so much more important than it isn't i mean cod you have to play your life but like it's a different type of playing your life like and these, and these it's essentially the same thing but like your health your health bar is like so much more in halo like you have yeah. chances to escape live whatever and yeah. i guess you have to use it to your advantage really but like that's the only thing that's one of the only things i'll say like when we play together and stuff like dad you me jared or whatever like that yeah. that's the only that's one of the things that we would have to work on honestly is is because what from what i've realized from playing and shit like if we if we're losing or whatever it's it's because we're solo pushing or we're not playing life enough and like especially when it comes to like oddball and shit or yeah CT, kind of shit i was ex or kind of mentioning last night or whatever mm -hmm. because this is this is the, the shit that i'm saying is what i've seen from what pros are doing so i yeah i i, I would want to mimic it or something or kind of exactly yeah but yeah nah like because halo's a completely different this is the first time i'm taking halo like into like a competitive mindset so with with these with these modes that i personally haven't played like because in cod since la like last year that was the first cod cold war that was the first cod i took seriously competitively but mm -hmm. i never i never had the the capture the flag um competitive mindset per se because we didn't have that in cod like as a competitive right. mode um so i didn't have the chance to do that uh and as far as like this cod goes for vanguard the third game mode competitively isn't even out yet so even if it is capture the flag like i don't know what it would be and um like i wouldn't know the exact mindset of how to really go into it other than just watching pros to see how they play around it but as far as halo goes like the way they what i've noticed is the way they play capture the flag number one is like i feel like the first half of the match is more so trying to apply pressure into a single spot or like two areas of the map and then playing for like play kills for a little bit see where see where you feel that they're at maybe play for like the camo or overshield or whatever the case may be and then once you get certain a certain amount of kills, then you start pushing up as a team, and then you get the flag, and then and then like depending on the map, obviously you you push you push the 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 area that is the most consistent, and then 
from what I've seen, is, especially in the capture of the flag, is they they drop the they kind of like hand off the flag to each other, which is fucking interesting. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, because yeah. they they hand it off essentially, but it doesn't mean they pick it up right away. Like if there's enemies trying to cut them off, then they drop it, they play around, they play for the kills, and then they'll advance. Especially if whoever the next handoff guy has or is fully like generated and stuff and we're close enough to like you know it's, it's a lot of shit like i've never really played capture the flag but it is it's uh it's a lot of uh, high thinking <laughs> like because i don't know that's just capture the flag oddball is like a little similar but i mean like it's it's about playing kills in certain scenarios and then and then once you're like set up essentially then that's when you really start accumulating time with the ball and then mm. yeah i mean there's there's probably more strategies or ways to go about it but that's just like some of the notes that i've come across just by watching what i've watched so far but there's probably a lot more that i don't know but yeah i mean <laughs> i get I, I i guess i learn a little quick but you do. There's probably a lot. There's, like I said, there's a lot more that I, I don't know. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, like yeah. I said, this is this is a part of it, you know. Like with each with each time we 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 squad up and we play, we will adapt to all of the things that are optimal and all that kind of stuff. So, and I mean, listen, I know we're on the right track when you say as much as you did <laughs> so that's how i'm a i i know that we're 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 in this shit for a good duration and i'm look i'm looking I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back on to be honest so so anyway yeah so that's so that guys right there is something that's been definitely going on with the both of us um and the rest of the ooch fam we're literally known as the family that is our that is our group name that is our our tag that is our clan that is whatever that is that is our john right there so the family you see us online our our, our literally our service tag literally says t fam like the family like that is what that is what we're all about so if you're trying to check us out you can check out brother uchi's stream this man is uh lethal 4 vr on twitch you can check uh, Modified's angle out. His is I'm Modified with an underscore, I believe, at the end. And then, of course, yours truly. That's Uchi Games. Because, you know, we out here always gaming and whatnot. And uh, that doesn't stream, but, I mean, who knows? Maybe one day. <laughs> yeah. So, he, he's joked about streaming, like when it comes down to taking uh little uchi's stuff away when he like he's like man he's like man i bought all this shit for you now you're streaming i'm about to start streaming yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh but yeah man so guys checking out them streams whenever we go live with halo make sure you have them alerts on because that those are these are games you do not want to miss it is some top level halo play if i do say so myself as at, at, at least we try we try to be at least so that's some fun stuff. Other, other than that, um, I guess the transition from games to more, or to other games, rather. Um, like I said at the beginning of this episode, Dragon Ball Breakers, which is the hide-and-go-seek-esque uh, 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 Dead by Daylight type of game. It had its uh, beta sign-up, which actually happened, and I believe it's over by now. And uh, I did sign up, like I said, I would. Um, doesn't guarantee that I will get in, but you know, I will uh, maybe get my hands on it and experience it f at first, so I can give you guys like a proper review. Because let's face it, the only the only way to really truly review something is if you experience it for yourself. You can read reviews, you can watch people's reviews, you can agree with points that people make or have. I mean, even with us, like we, we talk about so much and there might be some things that 
may not hit or strike a nerve for any of you guys that are listening right now and that's the purpose of comments that's the purpose of responding and then then we look at that and then we kind of elaborate or talk more or explain it differently kind of thing so as much as i was shitting on it as much as brother was just like yo good luck <laughs> he said might as well throw that shit in the trash then you know that is the only way to really cement the feelings because for all i know this game could be one of those games where it's like do i expect it to be trash yes but when i start playing it and i see how it can be fun and will i acknowledge that sure <laughs> and but then the other question is is it worth 60 dollars is it worth 70 dollars mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, and that and that's the other realistic part to it, because, again, I feel like a game like that shouldn't be anywhere near full price. And that's just me. But when we get there, we get there. They don't we don't know exactly when this beta is going to happen. I at least I don't remember seeing a date for it, because I tell you what, when I signed up, it was literally like 645 in the morning as I was waking up and I, I, I didn't have my glasses on yet. It was dark. <laughs> I was looking at my phone freaking like half blind and I'm just like uh, I was groggy and I was like oh wow look they have signups and I just put my email in there and I just went to go brush my teeth to get ready for work and whatnot but yeah that's that's the breakers that's the latest news on that and then you know that's that's pretty much it so I guess uh from here on out, uh, we do have some of these comments to go over. And then I'm going to leave some of the Spider-Man discussion for last. Uh, because there are some developments that I would like to uh, bring forth on here on this episode. And uh, get Brother Uch's uh, take on there. And we'll go from there. Head to thewaypro.com and use my code Uchi10 to save 10% off the entire website. Okay, so with I'm um, so the comments I'm referencing are actually not from last week's episode. They're actually from like I said, the Dragon Ball Super Chapter seventy eight. All right, uh, and this person goes fire reaction as always. Appreciate it. Looking forward to the next episode of the podcast. Appreciate it. And yep, Bardock surely did something. And also, I love how Gas was unique ability, or he has unique abilities and not just plain powerful. But Vegeta making that decision lit. Yes, hundred percent agree um i love how gas can like he he is like the first type of character that can create something he you know it's funny he almost reminds me of that one yao yorozu from my hero academia she has the creation quirk she just makes shit mm. you know what i'm talking oh, about yeah, 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 yeah. a little bit yeah yes yeah, gas kind of has that like he just makes weapons that's interesting yeah, yeah. and so other than that, the whole the, the Vegeta decision, yeah. There's actually something that I feel like I I think it was this in this in these comments somewhere. Someone mentioned something about Vegeta. Oh yeah, I, it's it's the next comment. Okay, this one I want I want to hear your full thoughts on this, John, right here. So okay so yeah so the first days is they're they're commending me for the editing on the video i appreciate that i'm glad you enjoyed it a, a video like that actually took longer than i thought with the lack of time that i have nowadays so that's why it took longer to release um so yeah uh, anyway uh, second of all really digging your prediction about primal instinct quote unquote <laughs> because right when uh monaito was about to mention how bardock defeated gas it was cut off, but I think this will come back into play on how to defeat Gas. I also do think Elik is sacrificing Gas's lifespan and possibly more. How, uh, how do you feel about uh, what they said so far? I need more. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I need more. Yeah. So, so, uh, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I can agree with that too, because I totally need more too, because I mean, I can. I can point to many different things that we've seen in, the, in Dragon Ball's past and, you know, non-canon future, <laughs> if you want to call it that, mm. um, to just kind of make, you know, predictions and speculate. 
but yeah we we definitely need to see more like this next chapter needs to come out soon and it also needs to have a flashback to that fight because like they can't hold out on that for too long you know they people can't for people some i forget at least how much they can actually fit in a in a chapter because the chapter since they come out monthly they're on average like 42 45 pages long so you get a good amount of story per chapter which is nice wait so quick question though does yeah gas even like because goku and bardock look so similar did, did gas question whether that was bardock or like a re like a relative technically like you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Um yeah, I'm pretty sure in the last chapter he did he did look at Goku and made the connection. And he I think he asked I don't remember exactly what the wording was, but he asked him, like, are you the Saiyan from da 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 da? And then Goku's like, I don't know who you're talking about, type shit. <laughs> like that wasn't me, but you're fighting me now. Like the 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 cliche Goku response type stuff man's never gonna know about his fucking pops <laughs> well no he does he does they made that clear like they they explained it in the chapter like when when naito was explaining that the the true history that was last chapter and the chapter before mm. like vegeta confirmed for everybody that he was like so this bardock like monite like monaito was like you look like exactly like the guy that saved us and Vegeta's the one who connected the dots and he was like huh like the soft spot uh doesn't like it must run in your family or some shit like that and he and then Vegeta was like you know how how can a low class warrior like defeat such a strong opponent or whatever and then that's when Manito states like oh it was the opposite and then he gets cut off because then the Shenron got summoned and then they had to go worry about that Mm -hmm. yeah so he goku knows he definitely knows and now it's just up to him to like want to know more if he's even fucking interested because i mean it's goku i mean if he so. can't beat gas or some shit then i mean that little flashback might reoccur if they go back that far to see like how bardock essentially beat gas that makes sense because then, cause like, then at that rate then like they'll it'll give them an idea like on how to go about the fight or something but like yeah it's not like it's not like fucking goku would know how to essentially go primalistic or anything or any of the speculations that we we have said about like that and shit in general but i don't know we'll see what happens i guess <laughs> yeah that's a good point because and and to to this comment as well the fact is that there might have been a way like there might have been obviously there was something that bardock did to defeat gas mm -hmm. however the other thing that i want to make sure people are lined up with here is that i don't believe that gas when he fought bardock fought him in his newest super i'm the strongest in the universe type strength okay like that's what goku and vegeta are now dealing with plus granola right those three that is their problem right now they are currently dealing with the strongest the newest and latest strongest being in the universe after the wish mm -hmm. and that is gas now and because of that gas now has this brand new like he, he looks completely different you know he looks like he is the strongest guy like he's taller he looks more filled in you know he doesn't look like a little shrimp like he did before Mm -hmm. not to say that shrimps can't fight but you know you already know how this goes like he he looks like a big a big boss you know what i'm saying like he looks like a threat mm -hmm. and that is not that is not who bardock fought i highly doubt that because that would be crazy but anyway uh, moving along with the next part of this comment they say um and as far as this being predictable you're right but I also feel like with Dragon Ball, that's kind of its charm to kind of be predictable, but twisting just enough where you go, okay, you got me there. Same with the shortcuts, like Granola being OP from The Wish and even his surprise clone he had. I feel like that adds to you chuckling and going classic Dragon Ball while enjoying it at the same time. But I also maybe speaking for myself. Yeah, I mean, to a degree. I mean, 
anybody could say like, oh yeah, like this is its charm. That's its charm. But at the end of the day, that's like an excuse. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not here for excusing Dragon Ball anymore. You know, like I, I love it. I have always loved it. I've loved it as a kid. It is one of the first animes that I watched before I even knew what the fucking word anime was or meant. And it clearly does mean a lot to a lot of different fans. Especially, you know, if you were born in the 90s and whatnot, or even the late 80s or wherever the fuck you were born. If you were born around that time period when anime was on an up was on an upcoming, then more than likely, 9 times out of 10, Dragon Ball is going to have some sort of place in your heart. And it is 2021, and I'm sick and tired of when certain things happen. That's that's just how it goes. So how do you how do you do you agree with me or how do you feel? Yeah, I can I can agree because <laughs> it's not it's not the best for an anime just to be predictable. Because then it's right. like you like like you'll feel like a fucking magician. <laughs> like you know like like yeah, or yeah. Whatever, like. like it's good to be able to predict, but not to be right every time. Essentially, yes. Like, like there's a there's a point to it. There's like I, I would say there's a limit to it because like you want to be caught off guard because that's what that's what creates the hype. Right, like, exactly. Like to be caught off guard, but like even even if you were like off by a little bit, like to be caught off guard that much or whatever, like like it's still hype. Like right, because then it's not. It doesn't become as predictable or the same thing, essentially. So, like, yeah. Like, I definitely wouldn't want Dragon Ball to be fucking, like, super predictable. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, Kai and I have said this so many times, and it's scary how accurate we were during the moral arc, specifically. Okay, like, at that point in time... We already have gathered so much Dragon Ball information, knowledge, and just... We understand how it works at its fucking core. <laughs> and how it's written. To the point where, dude, we were calling things. Not even calling things. We were straight up spoiling what was going to happen before it even happened. And as we saw it happening before our very eyes we were just like so sick <laughs> we, were, we were like i can't believe this is fucking real life <laughs> because like it, i feel like to a degree it's just not normal i mean i i don't want to say normal it's just it's just not right to constant like to just to just really be that accurate about something to where it's like you're writing it, you know? Like, oh yeah, like you just know what Toriyama's gonna do before he even does it. And that's kind of weird in a, in a sense, you know? Because like you said, like, I, like what makes a show really good is when you can conceptualize all you want, but then you hit that next episode, that next chapter, and you're blown out of the water again with some shit you didn't even fucking think about. See, we like shows like Code Geass and Attack on Titan and yeah. Death Note for the mindfuckery reasons. Even okay, my like hero here and there, honestly. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, like they got some they got some aha moments and some oh shit moments or things that I really didn't expect coming, you know. And there's still plenty of uh, plenty of that that hasn't happened in the anime yet for My Hero Academia. But like, for example, like, like I always draw back to this. When we first watched Attack on Titan for the very first time, you and me, and we're sitting there in the living room and we're like on episode four and this nigga Aaron died. Oh like God. we thought he, yo, <laughs> nah, bro. yo, I, <laughs> <laughs> like you had you and i were like what like this was the first time that we ever witnessed a main character just get go off like off screen like that and we were just like what yeah, happens here exactly like i mean 
Like I I knew there there was like I don't even know, bro. I never seen it. I never seen a character go out like that. Like they got eaten, bro. Like so, yeah. So though like, but but inside I felt like he was gonna come back, but I just didn't know fucking how. Like yes. like man got eaten, bro. Like by a titan. Yes. Like shit. <laughs> that's yeah see like and that and that's the thing like it's how you twist the story it's how you make your audience really like understand like 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 follow along and really pay attention because you have no choice because like if you don't if you're not paying attention things might just fly over your head and you might not understand shit that's going on and like just like and, and that's kind of like oh, one of the funny parts about it was like you take a main character that's known to be the main character who is basically narrating the story as they go and then they 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 are literally shown dying being eaten alive on screen so what more do you have to believe you have to believe exactly what they feed you <laughs> pun not intended right you have to you have to understand that that character for this point in time right now going forward is gone and so since that is a very like, what the fuck? Why did you do that kind of thing? Or how could you do that? That's what makes you feel, it makes you like, yo, like that's OD, right? Because in a, in a show like Attack on Titan versus Dragon Ball, death actually means something. Sure. You know, there is no fucking Dragon Balls. There is no uh, reincarnation jutsu like in Naruto. Like there's none of that shit. I mean, even in Naruto, death has more fucking meaning. Like, let's be honest. Like, they only whipped out the reincarnation shit, like, twice throughout the entire fucking thing. Like, from episode one to 500. All right, let's yeah. think about this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, and then, like, with, fuck, oh, my God. And then, like, like, like you said, like, it's, it, 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 at that point, it's just like, okay, how? It's not a question. It's not a matter of if. It's how and when. Is Aaron gonna come back? Because we have no idea, right? And then the next thing you know, you find out a couple episodes later, they they like Mikasa was about to die, and then she gets protected by a Titan fighting another Titan, yeah. and then we're we're over here still mindful. We're like, what? <laughs> like, a Titan <laughs> fighting another Titan? Like, like yeah, that shit, that shit was just crazy. Still gotta watch another season to the final. The yep, finale. Yep. The finale. It's it's a trip man but that's what like i don't you know I, we could talk we could talk about attack on titan all day so if you guys you know have any comments or you want to hear our thoughts about any certain position in attack on titan for the next episode just let you know of course drop them in the comments uh send an email fullpowerpod at gmail.com respond to the spotify you know because again this is full power we're out of control you know We'll, we'll we'll talk about whatever. Yo, where the fuck is Bleach? Next year. Oh, next year. Shit. It's, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Don't worry. It's coming. Come like, and, and, spring, it's legit coming though because they've had like uh they've had like magazine scans and shit like recently come out. So like it's not like just a word of mouth thing. Like it's happening. Yes. We'll definitely talk about them that shit too. Like every week we'll we'll, we'll uh. Well, matter of fact, I might I might do reactions for that shit. Actually, now that Yo, I think about it, you should low key think about doing some type of watch party shit, where like people get to see like our actual live, you know. Well, if we did that now, I mean, I like, mean we'd would, have to do uh, it yeah. over Discord. It would have to be over <laughs> Discord or some shit. Yeah, we'd have to hope that you have your like a face have cam a webcam by then. I mean, yeah. I could I could get one, but. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Yeah. I mean, people want us to be on camera for this as is right now, which I I have said like, yeah, I totally do want to do that, you know, in the future. So, mm. Mm, yeah. um, okay. And then the last part of this for this singular person, I, we got a little sidetracked there, but you know, all all in good for all in good fun here. Uh, a quick theory, um, they saw. Uh, I saw was that what if Granola sacrifices himself or ends up dying and Vegeta sees this and that's what makes him unlock Master Ultra Ego in the way Goku unlocked Master Ultra Instinct from seeing Mirus sacrifice himself. Seems very plausible now with Vegeta uh, giving the sense of being to Granola. What do you think about that? That was actually what I wanted to bring up before. Mm -hmm. Well, shit. I mean, shit. 
<laughs> I mean, I, anything is possible. It really just depends on, I guess, uh, if Vegeta actually, like, really respects this guy and uh, maybe learn something from him or something along the lines of, like, emotional attachment, in a sense. Like, not too much, obviously. Vegeta is a real, a real nigga, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's honestly the only way I'll see that happening is if there's that line of respect to where Vegeta actually cares, like, about his death if he were to die to get yeah. him um, like across that line essentially because like we've only really ever seen Vegeta like go full blown rage mode or some shit um like for example if uh Trunks for, like uh is about to die or something like any anything along like his family like Bulma or Trunks like that's yeah. the old, that's the only time I've personally I believe I believe if we've ever seen Vichita go like on, on a fucking on a rage to and like where he would um, exceed like his own limits per se right yeah yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's what I think about that <laughs> so so yeah I agree with that as well because like I mean it's it, 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 it kind of lines up with the whole idea of like, you know, Dragon Ball especially being very predictable and like literally copying itself, like mirroring itself. Like when we see something happen with one character and there's a there's a similar thing going on with another, there's always, uh, you know, comparisons pointed at, you know, one another. And it makes sense, but like, I guess, I guess it's, uh, it's sensible to do that with Goku and Vegeta because they're they're almost like people are looking at them as like they kind of went in different directions but are going down similar paths but again different directions like there was a fork in the road and Goku went the instinctual route and Vegeta went the ego route so if it's it's if if they're gonna try to basically say like oh yeah ultra ego is the god of destruction equivalent of what ultra instinct is you have to then you then you then have to realize like is it though because from my understanding gods of destruction are always weaker than the angels mm -hmm. and since goku is literally going for that you know mastered ultra instinct but then again he, he and this is where it kind of gets weird and convoluted in a way because do you remember when ultra instinct was started like it started to like become a part of the conversation like they kept bringing it up and all that stuff like and like they mm -hmm. would always like talk about it like during the tournament of power and stuff like that yeah. and then they kept saying that this is a form that even the gods of destruction have difficult time attaining but they never said that they couldn't attain that yeah so it's like okay well then vegeta could do it too <laughs> like you right like technically I, I mean yeah like you to to i think to achieve that form like you you just need to be like one with your own mind and shit yeah mind and Honestly, body and it's like yep it takes like yep. that type of energy or maybe spiritual energy in this case i guess like because that's essentially how ultra instinct kind of works like you're literally all in one like they're you know, <laughs> you're on some like fucking jujitsu bruce lee <laughs> type fucking yes type shit Yes, become water, my friend. Like, that's how it is. Like, and, and here's another thing to add on to what I just said. Monkey see, monkey do. How many fucking times have they copied off of each other? Like, Vegeta, let's not forget this, guys. Vegeta did instant transmission. Whether it's one time, that is more than none. Okay? He like, he like has using, done it. He just doesn't like but using yeah. it because it's Goku's. Right. It's, it's Kakarot's move, right? But... I'm telling you right now, Vegeta's the kind of guy where when it's all the all the marbles are on the line 
and it comes down to protecting those that he loves, he'll do whatever. And as you saw, he did just that when it came down to it. Because it was either he stayed on yard rat and everybody suffered, or he did the fucking thing. And he showed up when he was supposed to with this brand new uh, spirit fissure technique to in, 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 in an effort to defeat Moro, you know, at that time. Mm -hmm. So, you know... I feel like if Vegeta ever wanted to, if he just calmed his ass a little, little ass down and decided to just fucking take a deep breath, I'm sure he could also tap in to the Ultra Instinct. Yeah, it's on some meditation shit, honestly. Yeah, like, like that, yep. yeah. So, I mean, honestly, the, the whole God of Destruction being weaker than Angels, I feel like eventually that might be challenged eventually yeah. depending on what like where they take this whole like the whole dragon ball shit honestly but yeah we'll see i mean yeah because i mean the, the ultra ego like yeah okay sure it lines up with his personality and stuff like that but it's just like okay listen vegeta comes to terms like especially with a lot of these recent fights like he seems to come to terms with like he can't he knows like he can't always be brash or rash like yeah, like, he's a very overly aggressive, like, in-your-face kind of guy. He's, like, you know, all about his sane pride. He will keep going until he can't no more. But, like, I feel like lately he's been making, like, adjustments. And he's been, uh, he's been, you know, a little, I don't know. I don't know if smarter is the right thing to say, but he's been, he's been, um, I guess, a lot more mature, I guess, in a sense. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so there's one other one that I'll read right here. Something that you may have forgotten is that these Dragon Ball Supers, or these DBs, I don't know what they meant by this, have no time limit. Like, all oh, these Dragon Balls, excuse me. Okay, they have no time limit. So, uh, like, Eli can just go and get them again while this fight is going on and make more wishes. Uh, which makes me believe Manito is going to die soon. Also, I think this is only the start of a bigger arc. And that gas is just being used as a pawn for Elik because Elik is someone who is trying to take over the Frieza force using money and knowledge. And he probably has a bigger plan and is just using gas to make sure that these three don't get out of here alive. I also think Goku and v yeah, he also thinks Goku, Vegeta and Granola will teleport out of there and that gas will beat them. Hmm. What do you think about all that? I mean if gas is being used as a pawn like that's kind of that would be interesting but i mean if gas essentially is going to win this fight and like he says they teleport off i guess you could say that's part one like he got yeah. the he got the first round essentially until they level up or whatever the case may be but uh yeah shit i mean this is a. Uh, this is where I guess predictabilities or whatever can come into play depending on how the shit flows. Like if it, it so once we recognize or uh, it's like the truth is exposed to where gas let's say defeats them in this case for the first round and literally what he says is they teleport off of instant transmission uh, to like regain and shit like that find a new strategy or whatever they're gonna come back. Like isn't that what happened with Moro a little bit? Like Moro beat them a few times or whatever and blah blah blah. They like is that what happened? Yeah, that is true. Yeah, they they actually now that you bring it up, there was a <laughs> I can't believe I forgot this. There was actually a point in time during the first scuffle that they retreated and they didn't they didn't go back to fighting him for like another like month or two. <laughs> you see? Yeah, so like <laughs> it, like if that if that if they do lose this fight for now they'll be back in whatever time length they decide yeah, to yeah. Until, until they figure some shit out but uh yeah i mean get the uh, rinse and repeat i guess <laughs> unless they surprise us with some shit yeah uh, i guess that's what i'll respond with okay if that's the case yeah no that's that's a good one that's those are some good responses um, I'm pretty much with you on that. It's hard to say because, like, 
I'm also wondering like where Frieza will fit into all of this. <laughs> because they've na they've name dropped this dude so many times during this arc that it's just like, okay, he's gonna show up at some point then, you know? Like it's 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 like inevitable. So it's Frieza's like, friends with these goons? No 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 not friends. Okay, like the heaters are their own race aside from the Arcosians, which is the Frieza race. Frieza is like the guy of the galaxy. Like he fucking rules over everything because oh, he will fuck you up. The heaters, I pretty, I'm pretty sure they're trying to kind of like overthrow Frieza. Like mm. they're trying to be the new Frieza in a sense. Well, if they're trying to, I mean, with, if gas is all powered up and all this shit like that, then Frieza's not going to stand no chance. Like, unless, yeah. unless Frieza has required some fucking new form or whatever whatever shit because you know how you, you remember how they said how if frieza took training seriously this man's power level or whatever the case may be would fucking skyrocket like he yes. like he gets stronger like real quick especially if he puts in the time and effort into training that yes. is the only way or i guess i that that i would see a good fight out of frieza versus gas if that happens and that's if frieza is undergoing heavy training and gains a new type of form or ability, whatever the case may be, maybe move. That's what I'll say. <sighs> Man. I don't I even know how I remember in. that shit, but yeah, I do. Well, welcome to Dragon Ball, where that all these the things fly. will happen, we forget things, and then they come right back to us. That was on the fly. <laughs> yeah, that's how we do it. And, uh, Cause, uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's an ideal hypothesis, if you remember, because... Yeah. So, I mean, we we have all these like ideas that eventually will be shown, <laughs> because it it honestly just depends on which direction they go, um, which will then reveal which idea was correct, <laughs> because like we're, we're 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 thinking of the right shit for the most part, and the only way we'll be wrong or slightly wrong or whatever the case may be is if they um break the cycle and they, they uh, essentially uh what uh prove us wrong or some shit you know yeah I mean? like they they think of something new or they put the story in a different direction but i hope it would make sense and not some bullshit uh that's all i'll say <laughs> yeah i think where the the story is right now i feel like since they haven't mentioned frieza in a little bit i feel like they're not gonna for maybe another few chapters or so and then frieza's gonna just pop out of nowhere you like see, surprises see, this is this is just where frieza can really get a whole ass power boost like if, if they want to make it make sense or whatever but it's gonna be predictable like they haven't mentioned him we don't know what he's mm -hmm. doing but they could easily yeah. write in the story that this man has been training for this long blah blah, blah. they might yep. do a little backstory and yep. say what he's been doing how long he's been training and how he gained a new ability or form like <laughs> is I was just that's textbook <laughs> that's, that is textbook that's, fucking dragon ball that's textbook oh, right there like man. if a character has not been mentioned for a while they can literally write it however they want and say and say that this man's been training and give him a whole new power up that blah 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 like you, you already know what's going down for the they most need to give me platinum Frieza. And it doesn't and it doesn't mean that Frieza will get the W. It'll just mean that Frieza is a lot stronger and can put up the fight and maybe he's on the brink of winning but doesn't finish him off and this man gas exceeds Frieza's new power level or I'm just saying power level just to say it, but like you know what I mean. Like, yeah, I know. Because he's supposed <laughs> to be the strongest in the universe, right? So if Frieza low key exceeds his own power and he doesn't finish the job in time, then Gas will essentially rise above him and beat Frieza. But then that's when Goku and Vegeta and whoever the other guy is comes in comes into play. Granola. Maybe they team fight the man. I don't even know, man. Like on some Jiren shit, fucking. Uh -huh. Like that's how I see it. I feel like Frieza, like he if he shows up. I feel like he may have a little fight, but I don't think his involvement is going to be like the big, you know, payoff or whatever of this entire arc. Like, like I just, I just imagine the situation where like the heaters feel like, like Elik, like their leader, 
he feels like oh like they're about to be in a grand position of power that they could take out frieza and then next thing you know frieza crosses paths with elik and then he has he makes him throw hands and like then we say Elix fight, but then of course we see like Elix not that strong because he's not he's not the one that does the fighting. And then just a toy with him, I could picture Frieza showing off. He's like, ah, oh, I've been working on this <laughs> in exactly. my absence, and I want to show. And oh, see, like that's the type of shit I want to see. And they, I swear to God, it, they better give Frieza platinum, golden to platinum, son. I've been I've been calling platinum since they, he, man, since he came back with the tournament of power, son. They'll give this man either platinum or some rose shit. What rose? Can, rose Frieza. I, I can fucking see it. Rose. Okay, where do you get rose? I want to know this. Where do you the fuck do you get rose from? I mean, there's already been Goku Black Rose, yeah. Not, okay, but listen, 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 listen. And Goku and, Black, oh, fucking right. first of all, Rose, that was, come on, bro, <laughs> that, that is, like, I don't even understand why, like, that is literally nah, just the, the fuck freaking... all that shit, like, like the the <laughs> Super Saiyan God, like this, because this man's already golden, like, yes, I mean, shit, the color system is just so ridiculous. It, it could it, it's either at this point it's gonna go from gold to platinum like you predict or it's gonna be like some gold to to rose or red or some shit like that unless uh, or blue but like why blue like what are they trying to follow the fucking super saiyan blue concept like with frieza like even? yo honestly okay you know what now, now i see what you're coming from because if you if they're following the saiyan color order where it was like gold was a super saiyan and then they had Super Saiyan God, it was red, and then Super Saiyan Blue was obviously blue. Damn. I mean, that would be kind of fucking... I don't want them to do that. I, I want Frieza to have his own lineage shit, you know what I'm I mean, saying? I mean, if he goes like, platinum, he'll he'll look like, uh, what's his brother's name or some shit? It'll kind of be... Well, no, it, it should be like more on the silver side, I feel like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, who, who's his brother? Cool. Ah, no, come no, 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 on. No, not, not cooler. The other. Is there another one? Or is it? Cooler? You talking about Frost, the Frost? freaking Universe Six? No, 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 no. Fuck him. No, no. What was the? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Wait a minute. Are you talking about uh, his dad, King King Cold? No, fuck that, nigga. He's Freeza too big. doesn't have a fucking brother besides Cooler. Cooler. Dude, Am I it is. About I you, I don't I don't know who else you could be thinking about. Uh, there's, out of all the Frieza people that we know, there's Frieza, there's King Cold, there's Cooler, then there's Fro oh no Fr yeah Frost is from remember I'm remember the movie, um where Goku Vegeta were on like, the the planet. That was Metal Cooler. Yeah, Metal. Man. Yeah, okay, Metal Cooler. Yeah, that's this guy okay. Was I was I was bugging. <laughs> But, yes, but yeah, hundred percent. But yeah, like I mean, he he would look like similar to Metal Cooler in that case, I guess. Maybe, maybe. I feel like he he better look better than that shit, cause that's on that's on some Robo type shit, low key. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, but but yeah, I mean that's that's that honestly, like. Yeah. That's what I think. I yeah, we need more still, even for that. Need more. Need. Or did they even fuse yet Goku Vegeta for this man? No. Or think about it? I would have no. <laughs> they haven't even they haven't even looked at each other and made like the, the cliche moment where it's like, Vegeta, we have no choice. <laughs> we have like, no choice. We, we gotta fuse. <laughs> like they haven't hit that part yet, no. You see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, if, I feel like it, at this if, point they might. If it they get, might. If They're... it gets to that point, then it's gonna happen. But like, I mean, this, this is Dragon Ball 101. Like they, like they obviously don't want to start out that way. They don't want to fuse to to try and get the job done as quick as possible or whatever the case may be. Um, if if they don't think that they can beat the guy individually. But that's that's Dragon Ball. They always test to see if they could do it individually with the high their highest. Their highest rank of power, like whether it be ultra instinct and all that shit. Um, 
And then if they can't do it, then I mean it, it, it leads to fusing or uh, a new a new power up. <laughs> Here, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay, because this is gonna go two one of two ways. Okay, and I feel like it's gonna be more of this way. And I'm just gonna put this one out there first. Okay, so Vegeta is gonna give him the sensu beam. He wants to give him the sensu beam. Why? Because he wants him to seek out and fulfill his own vengeance because he has been targeting the wrong people for his whole life he's been lied to he got uchiha hard okay and so now that he knows the truth now he's gonna fight the right person and try to end them for doing wrong to what they did wrong to him they killed his mom they fucked up his plan all this shit right i think that this is gonna be a callback to something that already happened within this arc and this is during the part right after when granola actually successfully made his wish to be the strongest in the universe and when he was fighting against goku and vegeta and when he was fighting against vegeta vegeta said something very particular and this is something that i knew we were gonna have to pay attention to because it's probably gonna have a payoff there's gonna be a callback to this very moment that i'm about to reference right here and vegeta said that to be the strongest in the universe literally const it doesn't mean anything okay because that can happen in a matter of a second because all you have to do is even if you're fighting someone who's who claims to be the strongest in the universe you just have to be stronger than them for a second to make a difference to defeat them or whatever and that's it right <laughs> And so, and he said that to Granola, of course, while he was by the, you know, by how with every, with, with how everything was going, he made a wish to, to ensure that, that yes, technically, even with, with Vegeta's new form and with Goku's mastery, that's, you know, in progress for Ultra Instinct, even with all those influenced things, he is still the strongest being right now on universe 7 period that's just how it is because of the wish but now because someone else made the same fucking wish now they're the strongest in the universe so i feel like it's literally just gonna be exactly what vegeta said earlier in this arc that granola's gonna remember what he said and even with the sensu bean i'm sure he's gonna throw hands with with gas and gas is gonna fuck his ass up and then granola is going to think back to that and that's how he's gonna be able to power himself you know up enough to defeat gas and i also feel like like i i i feel like when so okay and this is another thing that i guess i should also add right because what is the what is the clarification or the ruling i should say it sounds like a fucking Yu Gi Oh game right what's the ruling okay what, what's the ruling when you made a wish for yourself but then someone else makes that exact same wish for themselves does your wish go away and if it does does that automatically mean that your conditions also go away as well and now you're just left with whatever lifespan that you had or how does that work now i asked that question but i also feel like based on how the story is so is gonna go i don't think that's gonna make a difference i don't think that's gonna matter i feel like what what's actually gonna be is that gas is yes the current strongest in the universe but i also feel like gas is uh, i'm sorry granola's wish is still gonna be intact as well but he's the second strongest because his wish was you know wish it, like gas's wish was done after granola's so it's like but it he, got countered yeah it's like it's almost like it got countered in a sense so i guess what the second thing i was going to say which actually i could kind of fit it in with this first thing really quick is that if there is that inevitable part where even after he eats the sensu bean gas does fuck him up because he is the strongest in the universe and he does have that time of like oh he's down you know and goku and vegeta are, are watching maybe at that point there's another callback, and this is literally goes back to the fucking Goku Black arc, where what happened? It was 
three on one or three on two but realistically it was three on one right where it was goku trunks vegeta and trunks was trying to fight he tried his best get, kept getting washed then it took goku and vegeta to fucking fuse and then that didn't work for too long for trunks to ultimately be the one to deliver the final blow <laughs> the same thing could happen here instead of patara they do the dance they fight this guy and even gas is able to withstand power from gogeta right and then it's still up to granola to deliver that final blow i feel like that could happen here because that is very textbook dragon ball Mm-hmm. yep yeah. yep yep okay. <laughs> All right, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much all of the Dragon Ball discussion that we have here for this episode, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, before we wrap up completely, last thing, like I mentioned earlier, that I did want to bring up was some of the Spider-Man um, news. Which, again, this has been a very, very heavily anticipated movie. I've been making predictions and speculating on this as well in how well it's going to do and i think i'm gonna be right so so brandon i i think i already started telling you this when we was playing halo the other day but listen never has this ever happened where pre-sale tickets crash fucking websites I don't remember if I could be wrong, but I don't remember hearing about this shit happening when Endgame had its tickets on sale for pre-sale. Okay. Now what I can what I can confirm is that Spider-Man No Way Home has already outdone Endgame in pre-sale tickets. Mm -mm. Yeah. Because I was talking about Nick to the, about this shit earlier. Shout out to, Shout out to Nick. Shout out Future Superman. <laughs> you know what vibes. But this, this man, this man thinks it's overhyped. Like the, the, the because be, you know how he is with the comics. So, oh, <laughs> so he he oh does he doesn't believe that this multiverse shit within Spider Man will inevitably like change a lot within Marvel. Or, or like it like there's a he believes that he doesn't think that by the end of this movie or by maybe even by the end of the trilogy that like we might get iron man back or some shit like that or whatever oh, like or captain okay. or even captain america or some shit like that to, to make civil war 2 uh i believe right or some shit yo okay because, see and i mean Mm. Because because he's he's essentially comparing that shit to DC and how these motherfuckers reset their their fucking universe <laughs> daily because of the Flash, <laughs> because this man this man can go back in he 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 he, he can go back in time, but we only we really mess with um the multiverse or some shit like that. Like we don't go uh -huh. like Marvel isn't known of to to really go back in time essentially unless we had I mean we use the Infinity Stones and shit to kind of do that but yeah. i mean we don't have those shits no more so all we have is the multiverse to change shit which is some bullshit but we, we I, I told him we could still make some shit happen if they uh if they uh, step up their game uh yeah yeah <laughs> but i'm sick of you these know... dc niggas though because they they, they can, <laughs> these, these motherfuckers can can fuck up and reset their entire staff like, <laughs> like they could, like, bro. I'm sick of that shit, bro. Like, listen, how many listen, times have listen. they fucked up, man? Oh, 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 yeah. Exactly. Trust me. Exactly. Like, Yo. and he's and he's proud of that shit. Shout out Future Superman. man. But he's <laughs> proud of that. Like, how? <laughs> what? No, sir. Nah, nah, nah. All right, hold on, hold on. Let me unpack <laughs> this really quick, okay? Because when it comes down to this comparison to DC, let me tell you something right now. Marvel is so deep in their bag, son. I don't have what I don't gotta worry about no goddamn DC for anything. And I'm not and this is not even a knock towards the DC fans or the movies. Anything. Listen, we already know that they've been struggling in the fucking movie department for years. They've been trying to literally play catch up with the Marvel Studios ever since they've been trying okay ever since they rebooted superman for like the fucking millionth time okay 
that's when they started to fucking scramble right. because they realized wow uh they're about to have avengers they're about to have all these other heroes get involved with the avengers like they're they're really building their fucking movie verse right now to the point where it's so big that they have to disperse it amongst fucking tv shows and that's od okay like it goes across tv shows movies and now animated series which you think about that that is three different sources of entertainment and media that is all uh, and, within a canon universe and that is okay why dc will never fucking work <laughs> because <laughs> these motherfuckers i feel like these they want perfection and that that is why they never move on that i feel like they're always right. on the first stage because they always reset or reboot like these That's like they, they 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 need new management bro i'm gonna say it i'm gonna be the one to say it. i don't know if anyone else has ever said that shit, but i all right all right, all right. <laughs> so hold on hold on hold on so here why don't we why don't we do this we can save this for next week because this could, be to, yeah. this, this could be a whole episode yeah this could be a whole episode but really quick back to the spider-man thing that i wanted to bring up was that the pre-sale tickets uh they did better than endgame across multiple different sites that you could get the tickets early right now i think depending on where you live you should be able to get you know reserve your your seat your ticket for whatever theater is local to you um, I would definitely check that before you even think about looking at eBay or any other type of third party selling shit because they got people with the balls right now to, that are selling their shit for like $25,000. A fucking fuck? yo. And and this is the thing. It it's it, 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 it's 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 really a shame to live in a world where you see things that are very valued to the point where it gets so out of hand that scalpers really change the game right uh, and that's fucked up but you can use that as kind of a, a leverage point to just kind of show off how how anticipated and how excited and how big of a deal this movie really is okay now i'm gonna give you guys a number okay and this number is two billion seven hundred ninety-seven million five hundred and one thousand three hundred and twenty-eight dollars. That amount is for how much Avengers Endgame made worldwide after being in theaters from April April 26, 2019, all the way through September 12th, 2019. Because let's not forget this movie was one of the first movies to have what i like to call movie dlc where literally after the initial run in theaters they fucking put it back in theaters and they included like bonus shit at the end of it <laughs> so let's think about this you had to watch the three hours and one minute worth of fucking end game just to get to the bonus shit at the very end you were sitting in that theater for a fucking long ass time but P listen i saw that movie three times in the theaters okay and i definitely went to see that bonus shit so what i'm what i'm bringing up right now that is the number that i want people to remember just remember 2.7 2.8 billion as as the average guesstimate or not guesstimate but this is the number that endgame hit okay and i have already said it i've said it on my streams i've said it in videos i've said it on this podcast and I'm still saying it now, even despite people on Twitter now, people that I know, okay, are my boy Geekdom, okay? He has even publicly said to me that it's not hitting that number. <laughs> and I'm telling and I and I and I and respectfully, he's my boy. I'm I'm telling I'm telling him, I'm telling everybody right now that Spider-Man No Way Home is going to beat that number. That is a worldwide number. This is going to be the biggest selling Spider-Man movie of all time, okay? And I'm gonna tell you right now that domestically, now th when I say domestically, I'm talking like within like North America, at least within the United States. The very first Spider-Man movie has made the most domestically at 403 million, right? But I don't think it's made the most 
worldwide. I feel like the one that has made the most worldwide has been Far From Home, and that is actually correct because I got my sources in front of me right here, okay? Worldwide, the first Spider-Man movie that featured to uh, Tobey Maguire didn't even hit a billion. It hit close. It was 821 million, right? Far From Home hit a billion, 131 million. So when you do, when you, when you, when you take Far From Home, the latest Spider-Man film, and you put it up against Endgame, it's behind Endgame by around three times the amount, like roughly. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, with all of the excitement, all of the buildup, the fact that websites crashed. I experienced crashes when I went to pre-order my tickets. Okay. I got tickets, thankfully, but I'm telling you, I experienced the crashes. I'm seeing people post their tickets up for scalp prices. It's like you're trying to buy a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. It's like, it's worse than that, I feel like, or maybe it's not. But the fact is that people are actually scalping tickets should tell you how fucking crazy of a deal this is going to be. And let me also tell you, that this movie is so is it, the street date is December 17th, okay? But tell me how they have a shitload of viewings and times for the day before. <laughs> Brandon, do you realize I'm gonna go see this movie a day before at five o'clock? In the morning? In the afternoon. <laughs> that was about to say. So, 5 Dude. p.m. Holy they and, and listen, they have times? They had earlier times. 3.30 was the earliest. 3 o'clock actually was the earliest. Listen, that's not, that's not even a prime time movie time, bro. But, but this, this is the point that I'm trying to make. Those, all those tickets are sold out. They're gone. You want to know why? Because people want to see this fucking movie. That's how big of a deal this shit is. So we can continue this conversation. Work, huh? <laughs> there must be a lot of people calling out of work. Dude, I called out two days. That, that day, the 16th and the 17th, man, I'm not playing no games. No way home, bro. This is going to be, not only this is going to be the number one movie in America, this is going to be the number one movie in the fucking world, in every country. This is going to be the, this is going to be the highest grossing superhero film to date, meaning that it will beat Endgame. I'm telling you, it's going to. Because here's, here's, here's the thing. Think about it this way. And this is the last thing I'm going to say we can sign off. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man No Way Home is hyped up for the obvious reasons. Three Spider-Men, right? But it's all the shit that we don't know. All of the other surprises that we haven't, that we don't, that we don't know yet. Because what if, what if, what if a, a one Tony Stark or even fucking a one Steve Rogers so dares to fucking show their face, even if it's a cameo, bro, it doesn't matter. This shit is setting up the multiverse of madness for Doctor Strange next year. So they're gonna have to come hard. They're gonna have to hit hard. They already went out of their way to show us and to confirm the previous villains. Dude, do you realize this is not only their opportunity to showcase the previous Spider-Man, this is also their opportunity to showcase other characters that have yet to even make a fucking debut or appearance or anything like that? Huh. crazy it's 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 going to be all of those things combined that will get the people that are watching it on the day before to go right on social media and to confirm for the rest of the world like you need to go see this as soon as you fucking possibly can and that'll be the end of it and by that sunday by monday morning when all them fucking box office numbers come Bro, I wouldn't be surprised if it hit a billion by Saturday. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Interesting. It's gonna it, it's gonna it's gonna make history, bro. Mark my freaking words. I guess we'll see. Shit. And yo, I'ma tell you this right now. If you don't see it like that weekend, <laughs> I'm coming the next weekend. I will watch that shit again with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If by some odd chance you don't go see it that weekend, it comes out. I'm gonna see that. I will uh, listen. I'll tell Bria. Listen, like I know you, we saw this 
I mean, we need, I need to see you with my brother again. So it's <laughs> it's originally supposed to be out the seventeenth, but it come, but it's being it's watchable on a on a Thursday essentially. Yeah, yeah go yeah go go uh, check your check your local listings. Yeah, no, I go fucking to... I work Thursday, but okay. You know, well, if you can't see it on the day before, then I will I will have been I will have seen it by that time. So yeah, I mean, I could call that fr if, if you don't see it that Friday, if you don't see it that weekend, that following weekend, I'm there. Okay, like I'm literally there. Well, like, I'll probably watch that shit because I already know niggas gonna try and spoil that bitch. Exactly, that, that's the thing. The people are people are gonna try to avoid spoilers. Cunts. Like, oh d, oh my god. Okay, I'm so hype. I can't wait. I can't wait. Is there anything else you want to leave with the people? Stay fresh, stay clean, take a shower. <laughs> There it is. Stay <laughs> fresh to play fresh, to listen fresh. Man. Good shit. All right. Well, guys, thank you again for tuning in for another banger episode of the Full Power Podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed this one as well. And please, please, please do us a favor and please respond to the Spotify polls, the questions. There's only two. It's like literally like uh, you, you, you select options and the other one you can fill in with your own response. It does help the podcast a lot. If you do let us know, give us feedback of what you like, what you don't like. Because any feedback is better than no feedback. I can tell you that right now. And that goes with the YouTube comments as well. So if you're on Spotify, do it that way. If you're on YouTube, do it that way. Do both. Why not? It takes you freaking like five seconds each anyway. Or if you're more than welcome to send us an email at fullpowerpod. Uh, or sorry, fullpowerpod at gmail.com. That's fullpowerpod at gmail.com. It's been your boys. The brother Ooz. Your man Ooz. We're out of here. Take care of yourselves. May the power protect. Keep it locked. Little right here on this podcast. Stay safe. Stay clean. Stay inside. We'll see you guys next time.